Hello, everyone. Harry here to talk about Mark Meadows's arguments on appeal from his loss of his uh, effort to remove his case to federal court. So you might remember the very first day after he's charged, he does the first removal petition to federal court. There's an evidentiary hearing, as there has to be. The burden is on the person seeking to remove, though it's a low burden. And um, he loses. He testifies, which is quite a gamble and probably um, uh, not just lost the case, but has exposed himself to some bad testimony, arguably even perjury. All right. Now it goes up to the 11th Circuit, and that's really his last big shot. It's not out of the question that the Supreme Court might take uh, the case, but it's not very likely. So he still wants to remove. And as I've said before, that's a two-step for him, preparatory to trying to seek immunity if he can remove his case. And the immunity would mean he wouldn't be able to be charged by the state of Georgia and the whole case would go away. It's a somewhat similar test, although immunity is higher. Uh, bar to clear. It's a pretty low bar, as as Meadows um, emphasizes in the 11th Circuit brief, and he makes a few points. First, he says that um, the the court below, and when you're arguing on appeal, you you want to look for legal errors that the uh, the court of appeals, which isn't wasn't present for the actual testimony, can you know evaluate kind of on a a, an abstract blank slate. So first he says that the uh, district court applied this gravamon uh, test, basically saying, looking at all the allegations against him and uh, discerning what is the core of, of the charges that uh, against him and deciding that they were um, the basically this meddling in the election, which there's no role for the federal government to do. Um, he, however, is saying that's the wrong test. He's not only saying they applied it wrong, but it's the wrong test. It should be, uh, basically, if there's any act there that he's charged with that is um, something that's in his job and duties as a federal official, it should go uh, it should be removed because that is what satisfies the sort of uh, reasoning and policy behind the removal statute. So that's a big, that's a clean legal issue for the Court of Appeals. Do you, is it enough if there's, a, you know, acts that are within his, the scope of his duties or do you give a kind of gestalt um, look at the, the core of the uh, charges against him? And, you know, as we knew from the start, he's got, the best chance at removal because so much of what he did, uh, you could at least try to characterize as just being chief of staffy, trying to uh, figure out where, you know, what's up with Trump, protect his time, uh, facilitate phone calls and the like. And his real, the way he, he went uh, lost at the district court is they're saying, yeah, but that's not really the core of what's um, uh, involved. Second, he says, you, um, district court, define the chief of staff's role as not including politics. There's the Hatch Act that prohibits it. And there's just the fact that there is no federal supervision over state elections. But, says um, Meadows, that was wrong to do. It's both factually wrong, notwithstanding the Hatch Act. And to the extent the Hatch Act, here's a pretty hard-hitting, aggressive argument, to the extent the Hatch Act makes it unlawful. The Hatch Act is unconstitutional, says Meadows. That's something that you've just got to be able to do as the chief of staff. And indeed, the district court in saying you don't itself violated separation of powers. It's not the court's business to uh, define what the chief of staff's uh, duties are. And then finally, he says, that the district court, without doing so explicitly, increased the burden of proof on him because he had certain unrebutted uh, testimony and the uh, district court didn't credit it. All right, this last point, I think, goes into the heart of, of the real weakness in Meadows' brief because certainly it's true that if it's the wrong legal test and one act suffices, 
that he should have had removal. But I, that's that's his best shot on appeal. But it's a pretty it would be a pretty extreme ruling by the Eleventh Circuit. But his big problem is he told he he gave testimony and the district court didn't believe it. Uh, and in fact, he got caught in a pretty bad fib when he said he had no role at all in coordinating the state electors. And then he was shown an email that showed he did exactly that. So it's, it's I think, mistaken. And we'll see um, what happens with um, Fonnie Willis's brief here to the 11th Circuit. But it's mistaken to say he, you know, that the court just um, ignored uh, unrebutted testimony. What it did is didn't credit it, I think, and found that, you know, what he was saying just didn't hold water in a lot of important uh, ways and that he really was on the facts and on his testimony uh, meddling in places that that he and no any federal official has no business meddling in. Uh, if the Court of Appeals sees it that way, then they should affirm and he would lose and his best shot is this legal claim about a new test. If they were to hold it that way and say, you know, just if, if he's got one act that um, qualifies as, as really part of his official duties, then it should be removed. What would happen, I think, is they would remand the case to the district court. The district court, I think, who's a pretty good judge, would say, okay, well, there's certainly more than one act, but then there might well be a chance for, um, Fonnie Willis to uh, amend the charges, have a superseding indictment that would try to tack around that holding by the Court of Appeals and um, tag Meadows only with particular overt acts or racketeering activity, as it were, crimes that didn't fit that description that so to basically just carve those out of the case. So we'll see. The, the two big weaknesses is are that and his just failure to account for the facts, which is something that a court of appeals usually would defer to, and that he got up and said things that didn't hold up, and the uh, the court, uh, the district court found otherwise. So I think if the court of appeals is faithful to what happened, they'll say no, he lied, he really was meddling in state elections. That's how the district court saw it, and then it comes down to, but did it, did it apply the wrong uh, legal test? They mean to decide this pretty quickly. They're really on to the timing uh, issue here. He had to turn this around very quickly. I think now Fonnie Willis has a, a week or less, then he'll have a few days, uh, Will Meadows, for a reply brief. And, you know, it'll be set up pretty soon. Uh, I think the court is looking to have it all decided before October 23rd. So if for any reason Meadows has to join that first group of cases, uh, they, they won't be holding it up, which is an issue that the, that the judge back in Fulton County, Judge McAfee, was worried about. OK, so his brief on appeal, by the way, well written. He's got good lawyers, both sort of, you know, front guys and the and the writers, Supreme Court clerk for Scalia, who does the, the briefing. So forcefully puts forward an argument of legal error. That's his best bet and basically ignores the um, the factual problems that he created himself by testifying. So we'll see what Fonnie Willis has to say and most importantly, what the 11th Circuit will do with the legal claim. Talk to you later. Thanks for tuning in. If you enjoyed this video and other Talking Feds content, please take a second to like and subscribe. Talk to you later.